We pledge allegiance to your flag of the United States of America and to your republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for who? For you, for some, not for us, not for our people. So please stop saying we're equal with your flag of red, white, and blue. You beat us. You beat us until we're black and blue. You beat us until we're numb. You beat us until we can't even walk straight. Uh -huh. You need to throw us in chains for the ones who are lucky. But for the ones of us who aren't so lucky, you chose to put our hands up on some type of sick tribute to your privilege. And then you pull the trigger. You pull the trigger until our bodies laid down in your ground. You pull the trigger until your clip is empty. You pull the trigger until we make the evening news. And when our children cry, we have to look our children in the eyes and tell them that they have to be cautious when they walk your streets. And that they have to do so in fear. And that they have to spend an entirety of their life looking over their shoulder because you will hunt them down. And you will bury them either in a prison system that aims to disenfranchise them and the dirt beneath them. And this is all caused by that same racism you love to say doesn't exist anymore. But that same racism is the reason why when we want to put a hood on, we resist. That same racism is the reason why when we go to get these jobs, we're dismissed at the door. That same racism is the reason why when we go to shop, we're being watched in your stores. That same racism is the reason why us saying the Pledge of Allegiance feels more like a root canal or a whip to our flesh yes! or a baton to our hands or a bullet to our back. Or to the gas at a Black Lives Matter protest. And it hurts that I have to remember that the system I was born into was built to work against me. And it hurts that I have to remember that you will happily invest more money into the preservation of wildlife than you ever will into the preservation of black life. Let me ask that question. When y'all turn on y'all TVs and witness another dead body laying down on the ground, what do y'all see? Another murder? Another sad story? Another funeral? You see the aftermath? I see a little child who just lost their father. Another single woman trying to raise a man. Another boy is going to grow up and suffer the same fate as that father, which means another woman is going to outlive her adolescent son. This country practices a culture that likes equal rights for blacks. And I know I'm far from patriotic. So it's a little ironic that I pledge allegiance to your flag of the United States of America. And to your republic for which it stands. One nation. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for who? Shalom, you know, first and foremost, hey, that was a, uh, that was a beautiful, uh, a beautiful thing that the young brother did, man, you know, he's, uh, on a, you know, higher level than a lot of you adults, <laughs> all right, but, um, hey, first and foremost, giving our honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rechah Gwadash. Um, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the Lord's elect. Hey, this is the brother Yeshaya, part of Men of Valor, South Carolina. And this lesson right here is going to be, uh, you know, titled, um, We Are Still Yet This Day in Our Captivity. Okay? Now, today is July 4th, as uh, most know. And uh, this is a celebration, um, if not one of the biggest holidays or holidays that America upholds right, outside of uh, Chris, Christ mass or, you know, thanks killing. Okay. And you got basically, you know, Jake, um, wearing red, white, and blue, which those colors do not represent our freedom. Okay. Uh, you know, um, and basically, um, you know, putting their spirit in a place that we were sent here as captivity and we were sent here to, you know, um, fulfill a role, which is to be imprisoned, which is to be downtrodden, which is to be, you know, a spoil. Okay. And you got multiple scriptures on this. So I'm a, um and you know brothers been doing um, July Fourth lessons every holiday brothers have been doing lessons I know every year from the first I'll say first four or five years I got into this thing every time you know a holiday would come around I'll uh, make a lesson on it but um these last couple of years my spirit wasn't you know uh into um you know I wouldn't say being a dead horse because it's still edifying to you know um go over uh, these uh type of things and the origins of these uh man made holidays or whatnot but sometimes it can get uh kind of uh you know repetitive you can you know but hey it's for all for edification's sake man so uh I'm gonna start out with this one right here that's on the screen isaiah forty two and twenty two but this is a people robbed and spoiled they are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and none delivery for a spoil and none saith restore so we hey man these uh 
these other nations, um, they want to continue to see us in this downtrodden state that the Lord put us in for not following the law, statutes, and commandments, but it's almost done, okay? The elect are waking up, um, the elect are being sealed, and, you know, once that happens, you know, we go into Jacob trouble and then ultimately return of Yahweh Shah. And the Israelites, you know, the righteous Israelites being uh, in, you know, rulership once again. Um, right here, this is uh, the brother uh, Jim has get this work uh, too. Um, you know, very, uh, uh, ele um, you know, edifying, uh, uh, two minute vid of, of this young brother, you know, so, um, yeah, I got a couple scriptures, like I said, I didn't want to beat a dead horse, but, you know, we're just going to, um, go into some captivity scriptures because, hey, and I'm going to start out by quoting the one that I, uh, through the Spirit, is going to name this uh, lesson through. This is um, the book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 7. Um, and for this cause, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. All right, where are we in our captivity? Okay, this is uh, after Egypt. Um, you know, this is uh, before uh, the, the, the uh, Roman. Okay, um, I, I don't know if this is the Greek. Uh, this is Baruch. Uh, no, nah, this is before the Greek. Okay. So, um, but it's all talking about and then culminating, all right, uh, to the point of us being in this captivity over here in Babylon the Great, okay? The worst captivity, you know, that we ever went through, which is actually, you know, a form of the Roman captivity that we were in. But, uh, you know, with this being the, you know, uh, uh, the eighth beast, all right, this is the Roman captivity coming back into, you know, play, okay? That, headly, that deadly head wound, which is healed, okay? Um, and, you know, we're basically living this, uh, not only the Roman captivity, but it's all of the captivities into one nasty amalgamation, if I, if I use that word right. So let's go to the book, back to the book of three and seven. And for this cause thou has put thy fear in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. And that's pretty much the reason why we're in this captivity. Okay, because we, uh, you know, sinned before you how about Shem Yahweh Shah and hey, the Lord chasteneth whom we love him. So as a people, we had to go through a captivity, okay, aka slavery. All right, verse eight, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord our power. So, yeah, hell no, we're not free over here, man. We are here for a uh, damn punishment. And if you are making light of your punishment, Okay, hey, hey, the Lord is not dealing with you, man. You either doing it from cognitive dissonance, okay, from a standpoint of where you don't see anything better happening, so you're just getting down with the program and you say, okay, I might as well run it up in Babylon the Greater, right? Might as well get me a little Hellcat or a Scat Pack or whatever, uh, you know, and uh, just you know keep keep living life and be as happy as I can. Force myself to go out, force myself to go have fun, okay, because you know this hell is is is, hey, everybody's feeling it, man. I don't care who you are, you know, hey, it's just like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just like uh, when you put your child on punishment and then you hear in his room, hear, uh, um, you know, he having the time of his life. No, you're going to go in there and you're going to make it worse. You're going to probably put hands on him. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, this is the book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 10. I rise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. So this um, nasty-ass place that known as Babylon the Great, a.k.a. Uh, America, you know, has done a number on us as people. Now, the hopeful elect are the only ones that are, you know, um, coming back to the Lord through the spirit and poverty. How about Shemiah was shy? But, hey, man, this... this uh, this day, I mean, this uh, these people are waxing worse and worse, man. You know, including our own people, and we got to get up out of here. But to stay on the subject, cause uh, you know, I'm just gonna hit a couple, um, a couple main scriptures, and that's it. Um, because you know, like I said, um, brothers been doing um lessons on you know these hella days or whatnot since the begin, uh, since you know. I mean, personally speaking, myself since I got in the truth, you know, I mean, I've been roughly in it seven years now. Uh, and yeah, but you know. Uh, hopefully it's edifying. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 1 and verse 10. Yet the children, um, Salaki, let's uh, start at 9. Uh, then said God, call his name Lohami. Salaki, 
For ye are not yet my people, and I will not be your power. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it should be said unto you, Ye are the sons of the living power. So over here in our captivity, in our worst downtrodden state, we are raising up and shaking off those proverbs and those bywords, which is also a result, a result of the curses. All right, and we're coming back and we're claiming ourselves and surnaming ourselves after Israel. All right, after Jacob, you know, um, via our perspective, tri our uh, perspective tribes, you know, and this is a beautiful thing to be waking up, but then you still got uh, two thirds of our people, you know what I'm saying, uh, in, in a nigga state of mind, and it, it is keeping us back, man, you know, uh, and, and and I just wanted to bring this up, the Emancipation uh, Proclamation. OK, um, and and I stumbled upon this article. When you look up the word emancipation, basically it's a transfer of power. Or a transfer of rulership. So that Emancipation Proclamation was merely, um, and it wasn't even, uh, you know, they didn't even follow it for what it was supposed to be for. Okay, you supposed to be uh, free the slaves out of uh, physical slavery and then put them in the, uh, 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 you know, the manufacturing um, industry. Okay, because this was around a time where, you know, um, uh, it, it started the boom. Okay, the uh, Industrial Revolution. The third, uh, what is this, the third industrial revolution or whatnot, okay? So, yeah, man, um, hey, uh, emancipation, uh, merely means a, uh, transfer of power from one entity to the next, okay? So, and you can look at that, um, I forgot, what, it was, it's a, uh, movie, um, about, like, the Civil War and stuff like that, um, and basically, uh, I think, uh, Brad Pitt was in it, or, uh, it was some, some white boy, one of those, um, Ethan Hawke or Brad Pitt, one of them. But um, basically, uh, you know, when the Emancipation uh, Proclamation happened, you had Jake or, you know, um, slaves walking around and saying they was free to only, you know, uh, <laughs> get captured by another slave owner uh, uh, and, and being seen as a runaway, getting branded, getting put to death. Um, you know, getting kidnapped and taken as a slave to another man's plantation because they weren't um, observing that you uh, n words, you uh, ninjas was free. <laughs> so man, this hey, we was never free and we still not free to this day. Like the scripture said, we are yet this day in our captivity. Okay, so I just wanted to bring it up and look what this article says right here. Um, uh, here it is right here. However, just as the Declaration of Independence did not free a single American, the Emancipation Proclamation established the basis upon a war would be fought and freedom won. So, hey, man, just as, uh, <laughs> you know, um, you wasn't free, you know, with the Emancipation Proclamation, at the end of, I mean, the, direct, the Declaration of Independence, okay, you was not free, uh, at, you know, around the Emancipation Proclamation. So... You know, hey, these, these uh, devils have ran um, a trick, um, have got you in a trick bag, man. All right. And we're here to tell you, you know. But uh, let's go to uh, the blue letter. And um, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 28. Oh, Slacky. We're going to go to... Uh, I'm tripping. I'm like I don't know how to use this. Job. There you go. All right. Bear with me and my folly. Like I don't know how to use this junk. Uh, all right. It's not taking my um. There we go. Damn, it's not taking my abbreviation. Oh, okay. Here it is. Um, to the bottom. Um, we started. We're gonna start around the middle verse because it tells you. There it goes. The consequences of uh, disobedience. Uh, verse 15, it shall come to pass if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And this is 
the end result right here. And it happens to be the last verse. And the Lord, uh, Yahweh, shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Now let's go see um, what that word buy you means. All right, because it doesn't mean that we wasn't sold on auctioning blocks. Because, of course, we were. But let's see what it says. Uh, it's, it's the word Kwana, uh, Hebrew word Kwana, and uh, it goes to to get, acquire, create, buy, uh, process, to get, acquire, obtain, um, basically uh, redeeming, um, there it is, right there on the uh, Kwana, redeem, so, you know, redeeming his people, and hey, um, no man will be able to redeem us except Yahweh Shah, and Yahweh Shah is coming back to do that for his people, okay, his elect, now let's go to the book of uh you know what? Well, let's end it with the book of John because, hey, we're free. Um, you know, uh, us that's in, in the know, okay, and that um, believe in how about you, we're free from this world, man. You know, and that's the only thing that makes us free. Not no emancipation proclamation, not no uh, 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 declaration of independence. You know, hey, the Lord and this truth said it'll make us free. This is the, the book of John chapter 8 and verse 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So, you know, all the brothers that's, um, um, that's subscribing to the, the right doctrine through the spirit of poverty, how about Shem Yahweh Shah and truly believe in, uh, in truth and sincerity, y'all are free. No matter what, we're still in our, uh, we're still yet this day in the land of our captivity, but the hopeful elect are free. So, um, Lord willing, that was edifying. I'm going to end it with that, giving all honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakha, Hagwadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. And uh, peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the elect. Until next time, y'all.